And we're calling it periods of not just thunderstorms, but periods of severe weather. And we will be here in the Dial for 12 Storm Vision Weather Center to give you the very latest on any warnings in the area. Can't stress enough what to do with the, throughout these watches. Stay tuned to the latest weather information, and you can do that by logging on to WSFA.com. You can stay tuned right here. We'll be here throughout the afternoon. Uh, during wall-to-wall -wall coverage, we'll also be with our partners, Mix 103, uh, and also uh, we will also be at WSFA.com streaming live video as well. You can post pictures there at WSFA.com. You can check out the latest uh, uh, dismissals from schools. You can also... Uh, check on those FIPS codes. That's for the weather radios that we have been promoting from the publics. Uh, if you need to program your county in there, you can do so by logging on to WSFA.com. During warnings, take immediate action. And as we're talking about folks in Coffee County right now who are under a tornado warning until 1245, stay away from doors and windows. Cover yourself to protect against flying debris. These are the plans of action you need to take immediately in Coffee County. And this is the plan of action you need to take if you are under a warning throughout the course of the rest of the afternoon. Now, again, we will be with you throughout the day today to give you the very latest. That's what's going on right now. We're going to finish up with 12 news at noon but again we are right here at a moment's notice to give you any more warnings in the area this is of 60 miles per hour live weather coverage on WSFA 12 Montgomery and on uh, WSFA.com we are streaming on the World Wide Web and also we are simulcasting with WSFA 12 weather plus you can also hear us on the radio on 100,000 watt Mix 103.3 FM, our cumulus uh, radio partner here in Montgomery, if you were to lose power. Now let's talk to Mayor Bob Bunting, who is the mayor of Ozark, which has been under the gun also, the next door neighbor, so to speak, of Enterprise. Mayor Bunting, first of all, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Uh, what's going on in your city right now, and did you get any damage? Well, so far, we're okay. The, um, we've, we've had some, you know, we're, the whole city's out of power right now. Had There's virtually no communication down there. It's a it's a real scary situation for folks, and we won't rest until we know what happened to those children uh, in the high school. Exactly. That's the fear of everyone, and that's why so many schools, it's a difficult call to make when the that's severe nice. weather begins to roll our way, because as you all know, who you've lived here many years, this is typical, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for southeast Alabama to go through this type of severe weather. But, but we do have somebody on the phone uh, from Enterprise. Is that correct, Bob and, Bob and Kim? Yes, it is, Rich. We have John Dean on the line again, who used to be a videographer here with us. John Dean is on the line. John, we understand you're actually at Enterprise High School. Tell us what you're seeing. I tell you, it's, uh, it, it's pretty bad here. They're, uh, a, it's a multi-building uh, facility, and most of the roofs are gone. Uh, there are a lot of cars uh, upside down. None of the cars have windows in them. Uh, it is... Uh, uh, and uh, the neighbors or the streets uh, right around the school, same situation, a lot of roofs missing. Uh, everybody's car windows are blown out. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. So now, what about the children? That's what everybody wants to know about, John. Have you heard anything about any injuries? I, I, I have not. I know that they have uh, set up a, a safe haven uh, somewhere within this facility. Uh, facility. I'm not sure. I think it's, I'm not sure. Seeing all the information we can right now from Enterprise, Mark Bullock is in the newsroom with some more for us. What do you have, Mark? Kim and Bob, we just got off the phone with some reporters at the Enterprise Ledger with some... Uh, um, disconcerting news, I guess you might say. They are reporting that there are injuries at Enterprise High School. Although because of some cell phone problems, um, you, as you can imagine in a storm like this, there are problems with both landlines and cell phones getting through. They don't know the extent of those injuries. At least the people at the uh, newspaper building have not yet heard back from their reporters at the school the extent of those buildings, only that they, uh, the extent of those injuries, only that they know that there apparently are some injuries at the school. The ledger is also uh, reiterating what John Dean told us earlier about the damage, telling us that there are cars turned over with their windows blown out, even school buses. On the ground to confirm what's going on, but what we can tell you, if you're just joining us now, a tornado hit Enterprise, uh, severe damage to downtown Enterprise, also uh, damage to the high school, which is uh, out uh, going off the northeast side of town, and we understand that there are some injuries associated with the school 
school there. We uh, talked to John Dean, our friend who was on the ground. He saw at least one stretcher leaving the high school with what appeared to be a, a student um, on the stretcher. Okay, we need to. Uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt you guys, Go but ahead, we Rich. have we have some other we have some storms that we really want to point out uh, and and talk about here on uh, Doppler 12 Storm Vision and uh, try to save some people's lives here. Let's take a look at some of these storms here. Now, we'll have to keep an eye on the storm, but uh, the warning, that's what's going on as far as warnings are concerned yeah, right now. A new, one, a new tornado warning, uh, Rob, and, and, and this one is in Barber County. Uh, a new tornado warning in Barber County. And let me, let's me let look at this. This includes the city of Eufaula. It's central Barber County. This tornado warning in effect until 3 o'clock. Uh, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Louisville. Or 22 miles east of Troy, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. That'll put the tornado near Clayton by 245 and back in through Mississippi. So we have uh, many hours, I'm afraid, to go. So we're balancing our coverage here by telling you what has happened already. And we are now going to tell you what is going on right now. And by that, Rob, let's go through some of the warnings. We have a tornado warning in effect for Barber County, and that's till 3 o'clock this afternoon. Rob's showing you all the warnings. In fact, uh, uh, that's the warning for 3 o'clock. Now, the other one here, the, out to the west, uh, uh, you can see the storm. Well, first of all, the one to the east is the storm that went uh, through the Enterprise area and mm -hmm. went through the heart of Coffee County and then went through uh, the uh, into Henry County and is now into Clay County. That is still producing uh, a, a possible tornado. That has been the, the, the nemesis, uh, the, the bad storm this afternoon. All right, then you got the, the Barber County warning you're showing us now. What about this other warning here? We got Pike County till 3 o'clock. Go ahead. And Southeast Montgomery County until 3 o'clock this afternoon. We have uh, the Butler County tornado warning continuing in effect until 3 o'clock. And this other one of interest uh, in Lowndes County until 3 o'clock. Rob, that one, if it, uh, if it continues to be... Um, a storm of interest may affect the northern part of Montgomery County at some point. Uh, right. That one's going to miss the downtown area or the city of Montgomery, I should say. However, uh, the one looking back here with this hail marker looks like it could possibly clip the city of Montgomery. Good point. Moving northeast at about uh, 40 miles per hour, that, yeah. one, that one could have an effect. So, uh, although the sirens are not specifically uh, for this storm, uh, we, we take every one of these storms today uh, seriously. And uh, any one of them could become a supercell. And any one of them could and can and uh, sometimes will produce a tornado with little or no advance warning. And I plotted this out on Storm Tracker here with Doppler 12 Storm Vision, where the hail was uh, possibly spotted within the storm. It looks like these are some of the areas where this could be moving. Uh, in the next uh, 30 minutes or so, we've got uh, Hope Hall at 3:30. We've got Southmont at 3:37, Lindale 3:39, and Montgomery at 3:40. So that's where this. So far, Bob, Kim. All right, Chris. Thank you. We want to tell you right now. Take a look at this. These are the first pictures in from Enterprise High School. Right then, you saw a stretcher going by. There, you see cars overturned. Yes. Absolutely, it is a disaster yes. area, Bob. That's the stadium out back, and mm. you can see uh, what looks like a. Uh, air handler, heating and air conditioning, some people on the ground. Uh, we, the first reports we got from John Dean on the ground, they said that cars were upside down. You can see these kids, you, they've got to be in a panic right now when they, these pictures were made. Roofs turn off all throughout the facility there, and as we had been told, we had heard that students yeah. were trapped. They were injured, that the neighborhood, as you can see there, surrounding had roofs torn off as well, cars overturned. Someone described this storm as huge and devastating, and you always wonder when you get those first mm -hmm. descriptions, Bob, if people are overwhelmed. Obviously, they were right on target. This is incredible. We're probably one of the hallways or perhaps uh, near the gymnasium area. You can see the people that are still trying to literally clear a walkway for everyone to make it through. This sits on a little rise on a hill in Enterprise, uh, surrounded mostly by pine trees, pretty wide open uh, space in there. And you can see uh, one of the classrooms and all the debris, obviously a lot of roof damage. In some places uh, you're seeing uh, the roof has actually collapsed. Sometimes it may have been blown away. Someone on a stretcher there, we're told that the surrounding communities were called, send everyone you have, all of your emergency personnel, we need help over here in Enterprise, and you can see why. Devastating pictures, and again, 
We apologize that we don't. We're not able to get in touch just yet with the right. officials because you can see why. They're caught right smack in the middle of it right now to really hear how seriously injured these students or any teachers possibly were there at Enterprise High School. And you notice one of the military helicopters there, one of the med uh, helicopters from Fort Rucker. I'm sure that that's probably been uh, the case. They've had some to come in to help mm -hmm. evacuate. Hopefully, we're going to find out that we've got some kids with minor injuries mm -hmm. and we really won't have to deal with a, a situation where we've got any fatalities. Yeah. Um, speaking of Montgomery County, if you have students in Montgomery County Public Schools, some of them uh, have not gotten home yet, but that is not a problem. That's because they're being held at their schools. The buses are being held, and the schools we're talking about are Dunbar Elementary School, Georgia Washington Junior High School, and Pentlala Elementary School, all three schools here in Montgomery County. Students and buses being held at those schools for another 30 minutes to an hour, or at least until uh, the severe, uh, the most severe weather has passed. So if you're a parent waiting on your child to come home, don't worry, because your child is still at school, Kim and Bob. Okay, and speaking of the rain, since we're talking about a flash flood warning, mm -hmm. I hear from Montgomery County. This is what we call rain vision, and we can actually uh, plot out how much rain that we've seen around the area. Of course, I need to switch uh, to the uh, label thing yeah. here. Now, this uh, is that radar you're looking at, folks. You're looking at accumulated rainfall here. And we're talking about as much as three inches in southern Lowndes County, almost right. two inches there in Montgomery County. We will get back to you with more warnings, but right now, Kim and Bob have a guest in the studio from Wilcox County. Yeah. And we have something new to show the viewers right now. First, too, Rich, let's take a look. This is a live picture from Enterprise High School, Bob. Right. This is Enterprise High School, uh, which is on the same property as the, the high school building, mm -hmm. uh, right behind the Hillcrest Elementary and right next door to uh, the Hillcrest Baptist Church. We keep trying to give you uh, that, that land uh, area, and they just took the camera off the tripod there for a moment. Perhaps uh, uh, we'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on with the damage. I see uh, at least somebody's moving the camera now. Hopefully they know they're on television. <coughs> yeah, I think that was Jeff's hand. There, there we go. There's a, a, a helicopter from Fort Rucker there that's uh, one of the medevac helicopters uh, that has been brought in. You can see a pair of them there. They're using the area next to the stadium. There's the football field in, in Enterprise. And the high school is just adjacent to that up on the hill behind it there. And just right there to your right, that's Hillcrest, Hillcrest Baptist, where they were telling the parents to go and, and look for the children. But the pictures we showed you earlier of the devastation of the high school, that's, that's the church to the right there, actually. You can see where they've gathered down there by the steps. And um, now devastating to see what's actually happened look to the, the high look school. Look at the cars on the, the, mm -hmm. the back side of the, uh, the, the end zone there at the stadium. And here is really... The, the automobiles flipped on their side. It's just absolute uh, devastation in Enterprise, the emergency vehicles all around. Look at the utility poles there, the light poles that have been just snapped off and pine trees in the background. The roof damage uh, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You can see the, uh, the, that's the little entryway that you came in underneath to come into the stadium. It has collapsed. Uh, we're told that uh, many of the sections of roof had literally fallen in at the, the high school there. And, uh, and students were injured. How badly hurt are they? We don't know yet. And that's the word we're waiting to get. And also, if any teachers were injured as well. But we saw several people taken off on stretchers. Yeah, look at the hole there in that, uh, that roof and the decking below. I mean, that's pulled the decking off. You know, it's, it's gone there, and you're down to the, uh, uh, to the open space in, in that particular building. Really, really tough to look at pictures like this. It really is. Reports of several injuries right now in Enterprise. We want to keep it that way. The one report of a fatality is out of Wilcox County right now and we have the state representative from that area, Representative James Thomas, with us here right now. Representative Enterprise, we just appreciate hearing from them. And we have Brian Henry now joining us. Um, Brian's still getting ready. I He's can getting see set. He's in Wilcox right. County. Brian, if you can hear us, tell us where you are right He's now. He's in Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. Well, can we find well, Kim, we finally got to the uh, scene down here, and it is unbelievable. Everybody that's been calling in this afternoon has done a phenomenal job describing what we uh, are now seeing for the first time. What you're looking at is the school. There is no doubt whatsoever that school is gone, at least most of it. Even the football field, if, uh, Jeff, if you can uh, pan to the left here, the goal post down here is gone. Look at all the trees. 
Uh, we, we still, as we just said, we just got here. We still don't have the official word just yet how many people have been injured, how many students have been injured. Right across the way uh, in front of the school, uh, I see three helicopters, uh, scores of uh, state troopers. There is no question that ge that gentleman who called some time ago said the uh, tornado was 800 yards wide. We believe him. This thing was a, a monster. It was powerful and apparently showed no mercy to this uh, high school down here. Now, joining me is a uh, young man. And what is your name, please? Robert Lee. Robert. Now, did you actually see the tornado? Yeah, we were standing at the hotel. We seen it when it was coming through. I mean, everybody stopped. Lights went out. and the, We seen it just go behind Lowe's, and it just took a path straight down. I mean, it was... It was huge. I mean, we had one man who said it was at least 800 yards. Uh, what, believe big. that? Yeah, it was big. I mean, it, I've seen I've seen the tornado in Tuscaloosa, and it was a uh, what four, mm -hmm. and it was close. I mean, it, it was real. I can only imagine what's going through their minds right now. We do have some viewer submitted photos, some digital pictures. This is uh, of a uh, tornado damage in southeast Alabama, near the Abbeville area in uh, Henry County, and here's more of it. It looks like a, a mobile home, and uh, this is what you get into when you get even straight line winds, uh, much less a, uh, a tornado. If you have any digital photos that you'd like to share, and we certainly appreciate folks going to the trouble of sending them to us, you can send the uh, digital photos to newswsfa.com. That's news at wsfa.com. And that looks like a, an 18-wheeler that's overturned, or at least a big truck. It sure does, and we've been hearing more details about the damage we We've told you about all day about the injuries and unfortunately as we told you earlier those injuries we've been talking about in enterprise turned to eight fatalities and we still do not have official word if those all happened there at the high school but that is where the most destruction we've been able to see so far and what we've learned from the people in enterprise that's where it really hit there hard. Mark Bullock is also following things for us in the newsroom. Mark, uh, as of today. All right, let's move to Crenshaw County now, where there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the central part of Crenshaw County. This is still 4:45 this afternoon, with a thunderstorm moving to the northeast at 40 miles per hour. Uh, and, and you're looking, that's the polygon. Again, uh, Rob, the whole county is not uh, colored in there, and we're looking at the area of concern, right? That's right, folks down in the south uh, will not be affected by the storm. and. When we say folks on the south, we're talking about places like Brantley, Brantley, right, Brantley uh, and down there toward Bullock as well, mm -hmm. and Merrill Mill also should not be affected by the storm, even just north of the Laverne area yeah. uh, also. But there is signs of rotation with us. I'm going to turn the actual warning off itself and get a better look at the, the cell, and we'll even zoom in a little bit more, but uh, we are seeing signs of rotation with okay. the storm. That, that has now escalated. The storm you're looking at is now a tornado warning. As we've been saying, all of these severe thunderstorm warnings should be treated like a tornado warning. We now have a tornado warning for the northern part of Crenshaw County until 5 o'clock. The, uh, the thunderstorm that we're showing you now on Doppler 12 Storm Vision is capable of producing a tornado seven miles south of Horneville. Oh, Horneville. I always have trouble with that. Or about 10 miles west of Luverne, moving northeast at about 40 miles per hour. This upgrades the severe thunderstorm warning that we were just talking about that was previously in effect. So the tornado will be near uh, Petrie and Highland Home by 435. Mm -hmm. And that's about three minutes from now. So if you are near Petrie and Highland Home, Take cover right now. Also, it looks like Dublin as well by 446. There you go. There you go. So the, the northern part of Crenshaw County. And then let's extrapolate that, Rob. That storm then would be heading for the southeastern part of Montgomery County, which has been hard hit this afternoon. Down in the uh, Studio B, Bob and Kim have some new information. What do you got? Okay, we, we have a spectacular photo we want to share with you guys. We actually have mm -hmm. a picture of the tornado. Look at that. Uh, that was going into Enterprise. And wow. We are uh, we're so grateful for whoever snapped that and sent it to us, this digital photo. Amazing. There it is. Now, we, you know, we have no way of giving you any sort of measurement on this or, well, or we had We had heard things. Uh, we had heard Brian Henry talking about 800 yards wide, and uh, that is certainly significant. Then take cover. Brian. Thanks, Kerry. Kerry Sanders starting us off in LaGrange, Georgia tonight. And for more on tonight's conditions, we go to a reporter who's been covering this aftermath on the ground. Brian Henry is with our NBC station in Montgomery, Alabama, WSFA-TV. Brian, we've been watching your station on the air covering this all day. What's going on where you are tonight? 
For Brian, this storm will not quit. Round two is on the way. As a matter of fact, there it is right over the horizon. You can probably see what used to be Enterprise High School. It does not exist anymore. The football stadium, about to celebrate its 50th year anniversary, does not exist anymore. We can, can, tell, we can tell you that eight people were killed in Enterprise. We have not been able to confirm that out of that number, if those students were uh, students or school teachers. But clearly, this storm has made a huge, devastating impact on the town of Enterprise. And Brian, you probably cannot see behind me, but we have several people walking through town literally with stunned looks on their faces. They cannot believe what's happened here this afternoon. Uh, this town is virtually a ghost town. A lot of people came here taking pictures, still cannot believe uh, what has taken place here. As a matter of fact, we talked to uh, one individual who, uh, after the tornado came through, he literally, according to him, pulled two bodies out of the high school. A lot of stunned folks. It will take a long time for these people to bounce back, but they are determined they will be back. All right. Brian? Brian Henry with the sad aftermath there in Enterprise, Alabama for us tonight. Thank you for that. And now we have a closer look at this huge weather system that's supported, but we are telling you now that what we know from NBC News, uh, the president through FEMA is using the number now 18 in the state of Alabama as opposed to 13, which we have heard most recently. And we do know there's destruction as well in Birmingham and mm -hmm. other areas of the state. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Right now, I want to check in again with Rich Thomas for the very latest out of the storm. Center. Yeah, Rob and I are worried about Coffee County. Uh, and uh, Rob, we, we've seen a number of developments in the last uh, few minutes down in Coffee County. Uh, talk about, uh, for instance, the National Weather Service uh, says that uh, there's a little hook developing here. And uh, you, you were just looking at, uh, a little while ago at uh, what looked like a, a possible tornado signature, a bounded weak echo region. There. That's right. And that's one of the, the benefits here of a Doppler 12 storm vision. We can actually zoom in on the storm and actually uh, dissect the storm. That's what we're going to do right now. And this is the, this is the great uh, thing about this tool right here. I'm all, basically what we're doing is we're slicing the storm in half uh, in, the, in the vertical. Right. In the vertical here. And as we go over this, you can see the intensity of the reflectivities from the, the, the radar itself. Obviously an indication of a very strong storm. But when we come a little closer here, uh, you can see two areas highlighted, mm -hmm. uh, two yellow regions basically. And uh, what you can see here is this is on the front side of the storm. And we've got uh, basically uh, uh, some wrapping around the moisture. And as we make our way into uh, the backside over here, you're seeing more. Now, this area right here, this is what we call a weak right. echo region. Right. And basically, this is just the beginning stages of some possible rotation within the storm. Now, there is nothing issued on this, but uh, we're trying to uh, warn in advance that we are seeing some signatures of a possible tornado within the storm itself. And uh, Doppler 12 Storm Vision allowing us to do this. It's the same kind of tools the National Weather Service uses. Of course, we can't issue warnings ourselves. We don't want to do that by any means. But uh, certainly just giving the heads up on uh, what we're thinking about this storm right now. We're going to go back and look at those. And um, in Enterprise, let's take a listen to uh, what the mayor has to say and also the associate superintendent, we understand, will be speaking. Uh, they're in a makeshift setting in the school board building. We're here to issue a press release on behalf of the city of Enterprise and the Enterprise school system. Uh, today we're currently experiencing an emergency situation in the city of Enterprise at approximately 12.45 p.m. A tornado hit Enterprise, public safety officials. We have some amazing yeah. pictures now, Brian, to share with everyone. The first time we've seen the storm moving through downtown Enterprise. This looks like uh, amateur video. This is from our friends at WDHN Television in Dothan. And apparently somebody just grabbed the camcorder and take a look at this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is downtown Enterprise. And we think this was at the moment that the, the tornado was actually moving across town. And uh, look at the flag. Look at the flag right there in the front mm -hmm. there. And you can see the debris flying around as it uh, as this storm moved over. Absolutely incredible. And from the calls we got from folks who could get anywhere near downtown, they told us severe damage. One lady said she felt it was flattened. We don't know this for sure because of the blocked roads. We haven't been able to get down there to see for ourselves. This is, again, the first time we've seen anything from downtown Enterprise today. Only one for concern for a tornado. But uh, because of that situation, because the situation is beginning to stabilize, we are going to continue to watch it for you, but we are going to leave our continuous coverage, which began uh, this morning. We have been on the air uh, continuously, 
And uh, so we're going to be throwing it back to uh, Bob and Kim right now for uh, uh, kind of a perspective. And uh, I, I mean, uh, Kim and Bob for a, uh, a perspective on this situation. Back to you guys. Okay, Rich, thank you. We're going to wrap up this wall-to-wall -wall coverage, as Rich told us, but he will remain right there in the storm center monitoring these storms. The warnings will stay on your screen. and. If warranted, Rich will be back on in a moment's notice to let you know where we stand. But our hearts go out to all the communities that suffered severe devastation today, destruction, loss of life and enterprise in Wilcox County. Small communities with big hearts and tonight a big loss. And we'll be with you every step of the way as they begin the recovery process. It's been a very tough day. Uh, we thank you so much for staying with us in our continuous coverage. And again, coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, we will have a complete wrap-up of this very, very stormy, turbulent, and sad day for the folks of South Alabama and West Alabama. Again, uh, we're joining NBC Programming in Progress. We'll be back at 10 o'clock.